Good kill, good kill. Hey, good kill. The McCoyan MiG-31 was designed by the McCoyan Design Bureau as a replacement for the earlier MiG-25 Foxbat. Therefore, the MiG-31 is based on and shares a large degree of design elements with the Foxbat. The single-seat MiG-25 could achieve high speed, altitude, and rate of climb. However, it lacked maneuverability at interception speeds and was difficult to fly at low altitudes. The MiG-25 speed was normally limited to Mach 2.83, but it could reach a maximum speed of Mach 3.2 or more with the risk of engine damage. An important development was the MiG-31's advanced radar, capable of both look up and look down shoot down engagement, as well as multiple target tracking. This gave the Soviet Union an interceptor with the capability to engage the most likely Western intruders. The MiG-31 would go on to become the Soviet Union's dedicated long-range interceptor, with far more advanced sensors and weapons, while its range is almost double that of the MiG-25. The MiG-31's radar was adopted in 1981, the RP-301N007 backstop, also known as the Zaslon, able to detect targets as far as 200 kilometers or more, and is claimed to have the capability to lock and engage targets as far as 140 miles. It is believed that four MiG-31 interceptors are capable of locking down about 1,000 kilometers of airspace. The MiG-31 is also able to carry six R-37 missiles, also known as the AA-13 Axe Head. This missile is a hypersonic, extremely long-range air-to-air missile, intended to knock out enemy AWACS and tankers far behind enemy lines with minimum risk to the launch aircraft. The missile is believed to reach speeds of Mach 6 and is claimed to have a maximum operational distance of 400 kilometers under ideal conditions. However, the true numbers are of course classified. The Russian Defense Ministry expects the MiG-31 to remain in service until 2030 or beyond. So today we're going to try to simulate a kind of a beyond visual range engagement between an F-22 and a MiG-31. But before we do that, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Have you ever wanted an amazing AAA quality game right in your pocket? Something you can dive into and play at any time? Now you can with Raid Shadow Legends. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. Use my QR code or links below to download raid yourself to your mobile phone or PC. That's right, I said PC. One of my favorite champions so far has been the Royal Guard, and I use it for one thing only. That is wrecking bosses. He has an extremely powerful ability that scales damage based on enemy max hit points in addition to all the other damage it already deals. After the Royal Guard, I think I prefer Ursula the most, clearly a closet legendary champion. Her second skill cripples enemy attackers and boosts your own with paired decrease attack and increase attack buffs. And if that's not enough, her third skill revives your whole team, which basically makes them tough as bricks with a couple of amazing defense buffs. There's always something new in Raid Shadow Legends, and this month is huge for Raid. They just released a brand new faction, the Sylvan Watchers. With some amazing new champions, Forest Elves, Ents, Druids, Fae's, they're all here and I can't wait to summon them. And if that's not enough, Raid's got a full lineup of events along with a new season of the Forge Pass, where you can get your hands on some of the most powerful gear the game has to offer. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now. Don't forget to check those out. There's never been a better time to get started. New players use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack worth almost $30. A free champion Vergus and also this cool in-game loot. You'll find these rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Thank you once again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. A lot of you requested F-22 versus MiG-31, so that's what we're doing today. Uh, I'm in the F-22, we got a MiG-31, and uh, we got Patriots and S-300 cover for him. So the MiG-31 is actually kind of an interesting aircraft. Uh, as many of you have heard, it supposedly made a super long-range kill in Ukraine recently. 
I don't know if that's true or anything like that. I've just seen claims of it. There's obviously no evidence or anything like that. Um, but suppose it, like, look at this. Am I getting, look at this. He's actually locking me here. I'm in an F-22, keep in mind. And the MiG-31 has that, uh, Zaslan radar. Zaslan, I don't know how you say that. It's a Russian name. Um, you see that he broke lock there. Or he had lost lock, I should say. Um, so it seems like he can momentarily see me. I have him on radar here at 34,000 feet. But it seems like he can't hold a consistent track. It's very easy for the F-22 to break his lock. It appears to be the case here. We have him at about 67 miles. And remember... Oh! <laughs> Did he just shoot? I think he just shot at me. <laughs> oh my god. And I can't shoot back because the AMRAM... The AMRAM can't range that. He's shooting the R-37 uh, hypersonic missiles at me. Yeah, so I... He's, he's shooting at me. I can't believe this right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit a notch, which might not do something. You can see the lock is broken. Instantly the lock gets broken. It's very easy in the F-22 to break the lock, even if he is seeing something. Uh, it doesn't really matter, so... I can easily break the lock. I don't see the missile. Oh, there it is. I see something over here. Look at that. Look at that thing's headed to where it last saw me, I think. Look at it. Oh my god, if that thing sees me, we might be in trouble. <laughs> it's gonna pass behind me. Oh, it sees me in the last second here. Chaff, 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 chaff. Okay. I don't... I think we're good. It crossed behind me. Whew. Spicy. So hitting the notch kind of... Oh, we're being locked again here. It reduces the relative movement. Launched on again? Fox 3. Hopefully that gives him something to think about. Gonna go ahead and hit the notch here. And if through the notch I can reduce relative movement to him, it might make it harder for his radar to see me. Uh, and many of you will comment, oh yeah, the F-22, the stealth is strongest from the front. Yeah, all of that is correct. You're right. But its side profile stealth appears to be enough to maybe break the lock. I'm still locked. You hear that steady beep? There it goes. It's gone. He lost the lock. So you can see he can see me. He can shoot at me. But it seems like not consistently enough to guide missiles onto me accurately. But this one looks like it sees me. It's still kind of coming over here. And I don't like that. Chaff, 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 chaff. All the chaff. Can't take any chances. Ooh. Whoa. Did not enjoy that. Thank you to the F-22 stealth. That thing definitely knew I was right there, but I was right under his nose and he couldn't see me. Whether that's stealth or, you know, some sort of weakness of the seeker, I don't know. But we did get away with that. The one thing with the AMRAM is, yeah, I can't touch the range of the R-37 hypersonic missile, but it definitely has a better seeker. So if I can get in range to this thing to shoot him with an AMRAM, I'm going to be in a really good place. Um, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. But to get there is a whole different story. I've reduced the altitude here because we are getting closer to his uh, S-300 sites. And I would really like it if they didn't open up on me as well. Because I don't want to deal with the MiG-31 and, you know, S-300 sites. I think I... I think he's over here, this direction. Come on. I should be seeing him on radar. Any there he is. Got him on radar. Locked. 14 miles. Fox 3. And defending.
Remember, there's no running from the R37. There is no such thing. We're already so far inside the Mar. That all we can do is hit the notch. Maybe hope he didn't see me. That Amram should be finding him any second now. And there he goes, hitting the ground over there. Splash 1, make 31. And we get to get out of here now before we get shot down by an S300. I wasn't really sure that this fight would be interesting at all, is why I kind of put it off for so long. Uh, pretty obvious once we got our ass kicked by the F-15, or sorry, the MiG-31 kicked our ass when we had to make the F-15, the F-16, you know, that obviously the, the next progression would be the F-22, but I thought maybe the stealth would make it too difficult for the MiG and it would just be dumb, you would just get close to him and kill him, like what's, where's the video in that? But uh, you know, this turned out to be fairly interesting, dodging those missiles and stuff, but um, I just, I keep thinking about that long range shot they made in Ukraine apparently, and I, I really wish we could find out the range of that shot. And you guys know we've talked about this in the past, countries are not gonna come out and you know tell everybody the ranges of their missiles or the capabilities of their radar systems so if the russians really told everybody exactly the distance at which they shot the uh the ukrainian jet whatever it was that the mig-31 engaged they'd be giving away a lot of information one about their missile and also about their radar capabilities so but i just wish i really really wish oh here he is on radar here I really wish we could find out those numbers. I think it'd be super fascinating. Uh, I'm not being locked by the MiG-31 this time, so that's interesting. Uh, he's having a very difficult time finding me on radar this time which is good news for me. Hopefully the S300 is also struggling to find me on radar. Generally the S300 is not something I struggle with when it comes to the F22. Uh, look at this. It's a missile. He's just... that didn't have track. Oh, you know what he did? He couldn't find me so he just mad dogged a missile. Here we go, got him locked. And he just hoped that the missile would come over here and find something on its own. <laughs> Interesting tactic. I mean, I think that's what he did. That missile looked like it had no idea what it was doing. It didn't see me. So that's an interesting tactic, man, because if that missile gets close enough, it's possible it can see through the stealth, quote unquote, of the F-22. So got him at uh, 40 miles. That's a Fox 3. It's outside of range, but it should be all right. The intention with that AMRAM... Oh, wow. I just want to send something at him that'll make him defend. But uh, he actually shot at me. So we'll go ahead and defend here. Try to break that lock. A sudden altitude changes help. Changing aspect helps. You hear that launch tone is gone. I think the missile already lost me. Uh, again. The, oh. Never mind. I guess it sees me again. Go ahead and put him in a notch position. Drop some chaff. I can actually see it. Here it comes. Uh, that thing definitely... I think it sees me. I got no tone though, so I don't know if it does see me. Uh, we're going to pull up. Ooh. Whoa. All right. I mean, I don't think that thing could see me. I think it was going to pass just by. I was going to take that chance, though. So that was kind of cool, though. We just pitched the nose up and it went underneath. He fired another one here, it looks like. Uh, he's reduced his altitude. 
because he probably was being engaged by my Patriot sites. Fox 3? We got him at 20 miles. And we're going to have to hit the notch. Again, the notch might not work in terms of making you invisible to the missile, but it might make it difficult for it to see because of uh, the fact that there's not as much relative movement. That missile looks like it just went into the water. And then obviously the decrease of relative movement plus stealth might be enough to defeat the missile. And here we go. He's still pushing me here. Got him here at 16 miles. Fox 3. Hold this AMRAM for me, my dude. And we'll reduce altitude. And right there. Kind of into a notch position again. And the missile tone is gone. And his lock tone is gone, so he's probably busy defending an AMRAM. Couple, oh, there's the missile, I see it. It just went into the ground over there, hit somebody's house it looks like. Yeah. That's unfortunate. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, yeah, definitely hit somebody's house. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, see if we can get him on radar here. Here he is. Actually got him. 13 miles now. Uh, he doesn't see me on radar. RWR says we're clean. Fox 3. And we're going to preemptively defend here. Alright, just in case he shoots at me, we're kind of already basically in the notch position. I don't hear anything. I don't think he ever saw me on radar that time. I re-engaged him way faster than, than he did me. And he's probably defending that AMRAM now. He's busy. <laughs> he's got bigger problems. All right, there we go. Once again, splash make 31, F-22 victory. He does outrange me, but he just can't guide missiles, you know, long enough and accurate enough to hit an F-22. So good news for the F-22, I guess. One of the harder fights in BVR for the F-22. It's usually not like this. So good fight. All right, that's it. Splash one, make 31.